Hello students, the topic for today is pure psychology and its branches. This is a lengthy topic, so we will, we will be covering it in two parts. Today we will be covering pure psychology, its definition, then cognitive psychology, social psychology, developmental psychology, physiological psychology and experimental psychology. Okay, let's start with definition of pure psychology. Pure branches provide the theoretical framework of the subject. These branches deal with formulation of principles, theories and suggests different methods of the assessment of behavior. Now what is pure psychology? Pure psychology provides us with the theoretical framework of the subject. It provides or suggests different theories, methods, techniques for the assessment, modification, analysis and improvement of behavior. There is a difference between pure psychology and applied psychology. Students often ask this question. So pure psychology provides us with theories. They generate some theories and methods, discuss some principles which finds its practical shape in applied psychology. So what, what is applied psychology? Applied psychology uses or applies the principles, theories generated by pure psychology to the life in general. So pure psychology find its practical shape in applied psychology. This is the difference between pure psychology and applied psychology. So the first field that I am going to discuss under pure psychology is cognitive psychology. Its definition, it is a branch of psychology that focuses on the way people process information. It studies internal processes that include perception, attention, thinking and memory. Uh, let's try to understand it. We all have negative emotions, negative feelings, but some people are so obsessed with their pessimistic thinking patterns that it becomes difficult to function in daily life. There comes the role of cognitive psychology. For example, a person is going to have an interview tomorrow, but he thinks that he is a worthless person. He cannot crack or clear any exam. He labels himself as a failure. So he doesn't prepare for the interview. So tomorrow when he appears for the exam or an interview, he fails. So the actual reason for his failure is lack of preparation and his negative thoughts. So cognitive psychologists, they identify the most valid reason for their failure. They, they identify those irrational beliefs and cognitive distortions, help them to make changes in themselves so that they can succeed. In this way, they replace their negative thoughts with more realistic or meaningful positive ones. This is how they work. They use certain therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy. Now cognitive psychology also handles our attentional problems and memory related problems such as Alzheimer or dementia. They also discover new ways of increasing memory and increasing decision making accuracy. So this is a very important field because cognitive distortions if they happen in our life create havoc in multiple areas of individual's life. So this is the field of cognitive psychology. Next is social psychology, its definition. It is the scientific study of how people's thoughts, feelings and behaviors are influenced by the actual imagined or implied presence of others. So it is the study of behavior of individuals in their social and cultural setting. Uh, the social psychology is very interesting field. It is vast also. So the main focus of social psychology is on the presence of others. How? the presence of others influence us. For example, 
suppose you are surrounded by a group of friends in that setting your behavior is very natural if you want to be loud you can if you want to express any opinion you can it means your behavior is spontaneous or real but on the other side if you are being supervised by a boss or you are studying in a classroom in the presence of teacher your behavior is different you will be subdued or reserved it means you are the same person but your behavior is different why because of the presence of others it means others presence can have a dramatic influence on us they influence our choices they influence our actions so social psychology studies these type of influences on us they also study how prejudices develop in society how stereotypes develop they also study what makes some people great leaders what's that that influence our attitudes what is pro social behavior what is altruistic personality what is interpersonal attraction and topics like this but the main focus remains on one thing that is others presence can have a dramatic influence on us we are influenced by the society our behavior is greatly influenced by the presence of others this is the field of social psychology next is developmental psychology its definition it is a scientific study of how and why human beings change over the course of their life it studies changes in human development across the lifespan including physical emotional cognitive intellectual social and personality growth let's try to understand it actually this field is vast and there are lots of developmental stages in it such as infancy childhood early adolescence later adolescence early adulthood middle adulthood likewise but for the purpose of understanding let's broad let's classify it in three parts say childhood adulthood and old age suppose a person a boy who is 10 years old his life revolves around his toys his school his schoolmates playmates and new gadgets this is his, this is his life he enjoys in this now person who is in his mid 30s his life revolves around his family that is his wife and children he wants to have comfortable job study income now person who, who is in his 70s that person constantly thinks about his health issues he fears his approaching death and thinks like this so people go through different kind of changes across life span at each stage they have different roles to be performed at each stage they have different mindset they have different interests they have different aspirations and different struggles so developmental psychology study changes across life span that is from conception till death this is the field of developmental psychology next is physiological psychology its definition it is the study of human behavior through physiological impact it deals with how the human mind affects our behavior it is concerned with how physiology genetics and biology affects emotional responses memory mental illness state of consciousness and sensory perception uh, let's try to understand it there is a relationship between body and mind it means there is a relationship between physiology and psychology so this field is concerned with how brain cells brain structure and components our nervous system in whole how all these impact our speech and actions so they try to study 
the psychological states in terms of nervous system or brain chemistry they are basically interested in endocrine system that secrete hormones and how imbalances in hormones or neurotransmitters affects our emotions and actions this is the field of physiological psychology next is experimental psychology experimental psychology is centered on fact based scientific research and experimentation experimental psychology solely focuses on controlled experiments with designated variables test subjects and statistical results okay this experimental psychology this field is very technical if you are a beginner in this field you need to spend some extra effort and time to absorb the facts i will be taking experimental method in detail in my coming video so let's try to understand it first of all what is an experiment experiment is an observation under controlled conditions we all have done experiments in our science class basically in physics chemistry and in biology so the so the main focus of experimental psychology is on variable relationship they manipulate some variables they control some variables and see the effect of independent variable on dependent variable a variable that is manipulated by an experimenter is an independent variable variable on which the effect is being studied is dependent variable and we have extraneous variables that are controlled because they can mislead our results let's try to understand it with the help of an example suppose we have we want to study the effect of different methods of teaching on the academic achievement of students here our independent variable will be different methods of teaching such as lecture method lecture come demonstration method or audio visual method our dependent variable will be academic achievement of students so this is what we mean by independent or dependent independent is manipulated by an experimenter dependent is on which the effect is being studied and we have control variables means certain variables have to be controlled because they can mislead our results so we can control or we can keep our conditions constant variables such as age of the subject intelligence aptitude sequence variables such as practice situation variables such as temperature in this way we can control those variables that can influence our results this is what we mean by variables and their control so in a nutshell this field tries to study behavior or mental processes by means of scientific investigation mainly in a laboratory under controlled conditions this is the field of experimental psychology so today we discuss these five fields of pure psychology this is part 1 next branches of pure psychology will be taken by me in my next video thank you